All right, I'm gonna give you the one thing that people are looking for when hiring medical sales reps. And in those interviews, they're no different than all the other interviews you're gonna go into. You know, you get asked a lot of questions. You know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Candidly, those really don't matter. You know, people spend so much time on how do they answer the, you know, what are my three strengths and what are my three weaknesses? Or tell me about a time when, right? You get all those questions when you're in the interview process, but ultimately there's only one thing that people are gonna look for in a medical sales rep, all right? And that one thing is the it factor. The it factor is the one thing that people are looking for when hiring medical sales reps. And you know, I've been in medical sales a number of years. I've kind of worked my way up through the ranks. I've hired people. And so I know I've been in the situation where I've been interviewing people and I can sit down with them, ask them a bunch of, ask them a bunch of questions. But ultimately when I sit down with our staff after those interviews, the thing that I ask or that we all ask each other is, do they have the it factor? And so the question is, well, what is the it factor? Because it's a little bit vague. There's not a, there's not one thing that, that says, okay, this is what the it factor is, but let me give you my thinking on it. Um, and, and I'm going to try to get at describing what the it factor is, is specific to medical sales. And ultimately I think it's, it comes down to two things, two things for me. Number one, you have to know things. I mean, you really have to know things. You can't just be somebody that has, oh, I'm a good person, I'm a hard worker, I'm trustworthy, I'm gonna show up on time. All those things, every single candidate that we're looking at have those skills and those traits. You wouldn't have gotten this far if you didn't have those. Those are not differentiators. Do you know things? Have you ever sold anything? Do you know how to make a cold call? Do you know how to follow up on a customer? Have you ever closed a deal? Um, do you know anything about medicine? Do you know anything about a hospital or an operating room? Do you know anything about anatomy or physiology? You know, if, if I'm sitting down and interviewing somebody and it doesn't, I really don't care what they say. I'm a hard worker, all, all of my attributes. If they're going to sit there and say, Hey, you know, I could tell you what the four, the four structures are in the posterior lateral corner of the knee. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, really? Whoa. Or, you know, I can tell you exactly what the ACL does. It resists anterior translation of the tibia relative to the femur. You know, if, if I'm sitting across the table from somebody like that and I'm interviewing them and they're telling me those things, I'm saying, wow, they know things. That tells me that they're a hard worker. That tells me that they're competent, that they can pick up on it. That tells me that they've invested in their career. You've got to know things. All right. Number two, I would say, are you impressive? And I think those are, can be similar, can be linked, but you know, you know, if you're, you watching this video, you know, when you've met somebody, that's an impressive person, they come off as just an impressive person. And I think what that comes down to are a number of things. And I, I use basketball analogy because, you know, I like basketball, but I think it, it's easy to, to make sense of the analogy using basketball. To be good at basketball, you've gotta be good at a lot of different skill sets. You've gotta be able to dribble, you've gotta be able to shoot, you gotta be able to pass, you've gotta be able to rebound, you've gotta be able to box out, you've gotta be able to play defense, you have to be athletic, you gotta be able to jump. And so when you look at somebody that's playing basketball, right? So you watch somebody out on the court, you know, pick up, pick up basketball, you can see right away by the way people move, by the way they jump, by the way they shoot, if that person has the it factor in basketball. You know, you look at somebody like a Michael Jordan or a LeBron James, you know, I'm not gonna get into the debate right now on who's better, but you look at a player like that, Kobe Bryant, they have the it factor. And what is that in basketball? They can blend all the different skill sets that are required to be good at basketball, and they can blend them all together and make it seem easy because they put in the effort, they put in the work to, to get good at each one of those. They can dribble, they can pass, they can shoot, they can you know dish it out, they can shoot inside, they can shoot outside, all those different things. Well, when you look at medical sales, you've got the sales side of things and you've got the surgical side of things. Do you know things there? 
Do you know things in sales? Have you ever sold anything? Do you understand the sales process? Do you have a sales process? Do you understand sales fundamentals? You know, on the surgical side of things, do you understand the anatomy and the physiology? Do you understand how to handle yourself in the operating room? You know, if you've got all of those skill sets together, it's going to make you an impressive person. So you've really got to think about, well, how do I actually create that if factor? I've got to be impressive. I've got to know things. I've got to put in the time and the effort ahead of time. You know, um, one of the things I read recently, um, and this is this is relevant for you guys. I, I read it. Um, I think it was a HubSpot article, but the um, the most recent numbers in uh, 2018 medical sales reps the average income the average income for a medical sales rep was $152,000 a year now that's not bad that's not a bad income right there and you know certainly from my perspective I was I was raised in a very poor household I mean I remember even really up till college uh, early college I I thought you know if I could make $80,000 a year I was gonna have the life, man. Somebody that made $100,000 a year, they are balling. You know, they can get whatever they want. I thought making $100,000 a year, yeah, I'm probably not gonna drive the Lamborghini, but I can drive essentially whatever car I want. I can live wherever I want. I could go wherever I want. You know, I, I had the perspective that $80,000 or $100,000 was a lot of money. And then I did the math on it. I'm like, well, that's actually not that much money. And then I made $100,000 and I realized like, yeah, that's really not that much money. And so what I would, I would tell you or ask you guys is how happy and how satisfied are you in your career? You know, if you're somebody that looks at this number and says, wow, that's a lot of money. Why aren't you out there pursuing, pursuing it? You know, that's what I would ask you guys. Because, you know, when I came out of college, you know, fortune, I was fortunate enough to go to a good school. Um, you know, and I, I don't regret going to college. You know, I had a good experience. I was, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to play baseball in college, right? You see the baseball gloves up here. I still, still got them up here. Um, I don't have it anymore, but I used to be all right. Um, you know, I went to college. I don't regret it as far as going to college. But what I do regret is not taking advantage of the time that I had there to educate myself, to learn what I needed to learn. I was only there to goof off, have fun with I had fun with my friends, play baseball. That was about it. I wasn't focused on my career, you know, and what I wish somebody would have kind of grabbed me by the shoulders and shook me and come up to me and, and mentored me and said, Hey, look, if you look around, it's all the smart people that have all the money. Dumb people don't make money. Smart people make money. You know, and when I was growing up, I always wanted to be the jock. I, you know, I played football, basketball, baseball in high school, baseball in college. I was never the kid that was going to answer any of the questions in class. Why? Because, you know, I, I didn't want to be a nerd. I wasn't going to be one of those guys. But if somebody would have mentored me and said, hey, look around. It's all the smart people that make all the money. What are you doing? You know, then I wouldn't have been late to the game. You know, and if you're late to the game, if you feel like you're late to the game, you know, I, I sympathize with you. I'm with you on that. Um, you know, it, it took me till after college before I really feel like I started to get a feel for things and, and get a handle and perspective on life on what's possible. You know, it's possible to have a professional level income without having an MD or a PhD. You know, I'm candidly, I'm not the school kid, right? You know, I passed in college, but I didn't have good grades. So, you know, if, if that's something that, if you look at a number like this and you say, Hey, you know, that's either a lot of money. Maybe it's not a lot of money for you. And you're already in a good role in a good position. That's fine. This is the average though. I've seen guys make a lot more than this. But if you look at this number and say, hey man, why can't I have access to that? I'd ask you the same thing. Why don't you have access to that? It's not a special person that can go make this in medical sales. I assure you that. There's a lot of people. You have to be good, but you don't have to be, you know, the, the 1% of the 1% to be able to make this money in medical sales. You just got to know things. You got to have the right career. You got to choose the right career path. And, you know, from my perspective, you know, we're all going to work 40 years. So let's say, let's say 45 years, whatever, close to that. You're going to get out of college. You're going to work till you're 65. If you're going to work for 40 years, 45 years, you might as well work hard at something that's going to pay off for you. You know, so if you haven't considered getting into medical sales, you know, I would ask you, hey, why not? Um, you know, but it, I, I don't ask, I don't say that from the position of, 
arrogance because when I was coming out of college, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my career, with my life. Um, I had a buddy that was in medical sales and he's like, Hey, you know, you should check out medical sales. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was fortunate enough to get a job in medical sales and really what I figured I would do is just, I take that job in medical sales till I figure it out exactly, actually what I wanted to do for a career. And you know, the rest is history. Here I am, you know, many years later, later, um, you know, and for me it was, I got into an industry where I saw guys that were not that much older than me making a hundred thousand dollars or more a year. And I'm saying, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't even realize that was possible. That wasn't a thing. You know, when I, where I was growing up, a small town in Michigan, nobody made $152,000 a year. Nobody made a hundred thousand dollars a year there. You know, 60 grand a year there is killing it. You're doing really well. So if you are, if you're somebody that's ambitious, somebody that wants to, or has an interest in medical sales, um, you know, one of the things that I've kind of seen over my career is there's a lot of people that have interest in medical sales, but they don't know how to get into the industry. And so if you don't have sales background or you don't have a medical background, the question is, well, how do you get into that first job? Right. And so what I have kind of developed over the last handful of years and what I'm going to give to you guys is a program here that is medical sales certification program. So I've been developing the medical sales certification program for the last couple of years. Um, you know, I've been asked many times over my career, you know, how do I get a job in medical sales? If I don't have sales experience, can I get into medical sales or I don't have medical background? Can I get a job in medical sales? And the answer is yeah, but do you have the it factor? Are you an impressive person? Do people want to hire you? You know, that, that would be my question to you. But the, you know, so what I've done essentially is put together a program for people like that, that have the it factor, that have the drive and the desire and the want to, but you're just looking for the information. You're looking for the knowledge. You're looking for those things that are going to set you apart. And so maybe you're somebody that has sales experience and you're looking for the surgical side, or maybe you're somebody that's in medicine and wants the sales side of things, or even if you're not involved in either and you're not sure what you want to do, you don't have a medical background, you know, it doesn't matter what your major was in college. Nobody cares. There's people in medical sales from all different backgrounds, you know, I didn't, there's nothing that I took in college that really is a transferable skill to what I do now. Now I took, I was in uh, undergrad, uh, pre-med, pre-PT. So some of the, some of the things in the courses that I took in college are transferable from the surgical side of things, you know, knowing the anatomy and the physiology and things like that. But overall, as far as, you know, real transferable skills to medical sales, you know, what I, what I got in college, it didn't help me that much. And so ultimately I've kind of had to learn this along the way from different people that I've worked with some, you know, either in the medical sales field specifically, or in just sales trainers, things like that. And so I've got this program for you guys. And you know, what I would, what I would say to you guys is, you know, if you're somebody that wants to learn hands-on, you know, you're a hands-on learner, you've got to be able to touch things, feel things, see things in person. You know, there's, there's another, there's other courses out there. Uh, if you want to get into medical sales. So for example, the medical sales college, you know, I've, I, I've known and worked with and hired a couple people from the medical sales college and that's, you know, it's a good program. It's a good program, but it's going to cost you $12,000 and you're going to have to travel to, you know, Colorado or wherever for t eight to 12 weeks for this course. And ultimately, you know, if, if you have to have a hands-on experience, I would say go for it. You know, that's a good solution. But I know that there are people out there who want to get into medical sales, but they don't have $12,000 or they don't have 12 weeks of time to take, take off, you know, to leave their family or to leave their job, to go back to school, to go into debt. You know, maybe you can fork out the $12,000. That's fine. But there's probably a lot of people that are going there to the medical sales college getting student loans, you know? So if you're, if you need the hands-on experience, go for it. But if you're somebody that is, uh, is capable and willing and ambitious to be able to learn on your own, you know, so you can learn from home. You could go to a Starbucks and learn, you know, it really doesn't matter wherever, but what I'm going to do in this course is I'm going to teach you all of the things that you need to know 
to get that job in medical sales, to be impressive, to have the it factor when you walk in to an interview. You know, if you sit down in an interview, if you take this course, you're going to be able to sit down in an interview and it doesn't matter what you say your strengths or your weaknesses are. Because you can sit there and say, hey, you know, let me tell you about the four rotator cuff tendons and the function that they have on the glenohumeral joint. And they're going to say, uh, where'd you learn that? Or you're going to go in there and say, hey, let me tell you about the posterior lateral corner in the knee and the screw hole mechanism as you go into extension. <laughs> like you're, their jaws are going to drop to the floor if you're able to tell them things like that. Because you're not somebody coming in there with medical sales experience. Or you walk in there and you say, hey, look, I understand I haven't sold products in medical sales, but let me show you my sales process. We give you a sales process. Or let me tell you how I go cold call on people. So that's what we do for you guys. So if you're somebody that is ambitious and wants to get into medical sales and you don't have $12,000 or 12 weeks of your time, you know, I would say check this out because we're gonna be able to give you the results you need if you're willing to put in the effort to do it. So the way that we've outlined this program is there's two halves to the program. You have the sales side and you've got the surgical. So we have a sales certification program and we have a surgical certification program. Now, if you're somebody that needs both, so you don't have experience in both, or even if let's say you do have, you know, a medical background, but you don't know the procedures or you don't know the specifics of how all the muscles, tendons and ligaments function in and around the joints, you know, this may still be a program you want to, you want to get into, but understand there's two halves of the program. You could get them independently based on what you need. What I would recommend is you get both of them. You know, they, they complement each other. Some of, the, some of the information crosses over, but understand that um, if, you, if you only need half of the program, we still offer that to you because I understand that there are people out there that have some experience and they're just looking for help on one of the other, thi one of the other topics. But if you're somebody that needs both, believe me, you don't have to have experience in sales or surgical for this to help you. So um, some of the things that we're going to cover in the sales side of things are the fundamentals. Tunnels. You know, cold calling. Follow up. Closing deals. Um, everything. Account management. Um, handling objections. That's huge. Handling objections. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a ton of courses in there. I think we have, I think I've got 89 courses listed right now, and that's going to grow over time. I've got other courses that I want to put on there. It's just a matter of actually getting them put into the program, but you're going to have lifetime access to that. So don't worry about that. You're going to get those as, as I drop them. And then on the surgical side, you're going to have anatomy, uh, physiology, physiology, you're going to have procedures. You're going to have, learn everything you need to know about the OR. How do you handle yourself in the OR? Who are the other people in the rooms? You know, do you know who an anesthesiologist and what they do? Do you know what a CRNA is? Do you know what a surgical tech is or a circulating nurse? Um, you know, I, I can only go so deep on the products and I'll touch on some of the products here, but understand, you know, if you don't have a job in medical sales, I don't know which company you're going to go to, but so there's really, there's kind of three things on the surgical side of thing. You have products, you have procedures, and you have anatomy. And when you work for one of the manufacturers out there, they do a great job of teaching you on the products, but they don't spend a whole lot of time on the anatomy or the procedures. And that is where, when you sit down for an interview, you're gonna be able to impress people. If you talk to them and you understand the anatomy of the hip, and they're a hip company, they're gonna be like, whoa, you know, because as, I'm somebody that, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the best medical sales rep out there or manager out there, but I've hired a handful of people. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm looking for. And if somebody is going to sit down across from me in an interview and tell me all the things that they know about the anatomy and the procedures and the physiology, I know that that's somebody, a couple of things I know about that person. They've invested in themselves so I can count on them. They've invested their own hard earned money to get this position. They're trustworthy, but also I don't have to train them. Their onboarding is going to be so much more quicker, more quick. You know, one of the, 
probably the most expe expensive things that medical sales or medical device companies or distribution groups struggle with is the onboarding of reps because it takes so long for them to learn the anatomy of the procedures, the products, how to handle themselves in the OR, how do you go check in a tray at an account, uh, where do you go at a hospital, where do you go to a surgery center, all those things. You know, it could take a year or more before that person, that new rep's actually out comfortable in the field and before I have confidence that they're gonna be able to handle themselves in the operating room by themselves. You know, so if I can shorten that time by teaching you guys all the things you need to know ahead of time and you walk into an interview and you can communicate that to them, I mean, that's, that is a game changer. You know, because words, your words don't really matter when it comes down to it in, in an interview. Don't tell me, show me. That's what, they're, that's what they're thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Don't tell me, show me. Don't tell me you're a good guy. Don't tell me you're a good girl. Don't tell me you're hardworking. Don't tell me you're going to show up on time. Show me. And if you sit there and show me and you're like, but da 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 and I can knock out all these things and let me tell you about my sales process and let me tell you about the anatomy and the procedures. Done deal. You're going to be able to get those jobs. I'm telling you. You know, I've been in your position. I've I've been hired for multiple positions. I've moved up through the ranks. You know, I've been there. And that is where this, if you know this, in my opinion, you're gonna have the it factor, okay? And that's what people are looking when they're hiring medical sales reps. They want people to have the it factor. So if you're somebody that is interested in medical sales, if you have the ambition, the drive, you wanna learn it, if, you, if the only thing you're missing is the education and somebody to tell you exactly what you need to know, but you're willing to put in the work, this program is going to do that for you. All right. So um, if you don't see a link here below, um, go to medicalsalescertificationprogram.com. You're going to be able to find the program there. If you have any questions, you can contact me directly at Colby, K-O-L-B-Y, at uh, medicalsalescertification.com. All right. So if you have any other questions, reach out to me. If not, uh, I hope to see you on this program and I hope I can help you guys. Thanks.